What's going on my dudes? As I've been stuck at home over the past couple weeks, I've taken some time to sort through some of my old hard drives. While I was deep inside of the archives, I came across some old footage of the one month trip my friend Mike and I took to Sri Lanka. Since none of us are able to travel at the moment, I thought telling you about our experience might be a nice way to give you some Sri Lankan travel inspiration and some insight into what a trip to Sri Lanka might look like. We arrived in Colombo after spending a hectic month in India, so we were both pretty exhausted. We are here in the Colombo airport, and don't worry, after a long day of travel and flights, the Colombo airport in Sri Lanka has got you covered. You can buy a washing machine, or, or a dryer, or an oven, or any other large appliance for that matter, because that's exactly what you want when you're headed to go pick up your bag. Shortly after getting off the plane, we realized how laid back everything was, which was a total shock coming from India. We began our trip by making our way up to Jaffna, an isolated town in the north of Sri Lanka. Jaffna happened to be a town that apparently not many other tourists knew about. It seemed as if Mike and I were the only ones there. From what we had heard, the north has developed at a slower pace than the rest of the country due to the civil war which ended in 2009. Upon arriving in Jaffna, Mike and I found a random mechanic shop on the side of the road which we were able to rent some bikes from. We ended up riding for a couple hours, eventually arriving at an oceanside pool called the Kiramali Pond. Now this is a holy site and local bath, so I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to swim, although I had my fingers crossed. As we got off our bikes and walked up to the pond, the locals were so surprised to see the two of us, they immediately encouraged us to join them. These guys were hilarious and it really spoke to what the rest of the people that we would meet on our trip were like. One thing I have noticed just in our couple days here in Sri Lanka so far is the people have been so, so kind. Mike, would you agree? Oh, 100%. The yeah. people are so nice Definitely. here. Yeah. After our time in Jaffna, we decided to pack things up and make our way to the east coast of Sri Lanka. Now we had the option of taking a first class train there. Figured out that they only are offering like a first class train to Annapurna. Huh? Annapurna. Anuradhapura, which is where we want to go. And the first class train is significantly more expensive compared to like what transit usually is here. So he said that there's a bus not too far away. I guess we're gonna go check out the bus. Being cheap backpackers, we opted for the local bus. This is an awesome thing to do if you're in the mood for an adventure. The cramped seats, loud music, eccentric decor, and lack of stopping make for, let's just say, a unique experience. <laughs> An interesting time on those things. They're always a great time. Now, all jokes aside, the bus system in Sri Lanka is actually great. You can get just about anywhere in the country for a few dollars, which makes up for all of its little quirks. Our first public bus experience was a success. Aside from a quick tire change on the side of the road, it went off without a hitch. Mike and I ended up arriving on the East Coast quite late at night, and we didn't have any accommodations booked. Off the bus, and now we sit in the back of someone's pickup truck. This man came along with a business card, told us about his place, and said, uh, I can take you to it, hop in the back of my truck, so that's what we're doing. This kind of segues me into the next point I wanna make about our Sri Lankan experience, and that was how safe we felt. Both Mike and I have talked about it, and we can't think of a single time during our one month trip through Sri Lanka that we felt uncomfortable. Like I said, the people are so kind, and anecdotally from what we experienced and everyone that we talked to, it felt pretty safe. This dude's house ended up being really nice and reasonably priced. I think we paid around eight Canadian dollars each for the night, and that even included our morning tea. Good morning, my dudes. What kind of tea is this? Zesta. Being on the East Coast, it was finally time to hit the beaches and relax. This is exactly what we were hoping for after our hectic month in India. Maybe it's just me, but there's something about clean, white sandy beaches with warm ocean water that gets me. Now, I haven't touched on food yet, which is kind of strange because I absolutely love the food in Sri Lanka. It's quite similar to Indian food in a lot of ways. Lots of vegetable dishes, tons of spices, and super flavorful. Out of all the dishes that we had, my favorite was definitely kotu. Kotu is made with chopped up roti, which is sort of like a Sri Lankan flatbread, combined with egg, vegetables, and spices, all tossed together on a flat griddle and mixed with the iconic Sri Lankan chopping blades. You can hear those bad boys from a mile away. Kotu to Sri Lanka is kind of like Pad Thai to Thailand. 
it's a staple. Now, another Sri Lankan staple and completely unrelated from KOTU is their intricate train system. It's cheap, far-reaching, and beautiful. Seriously, some of the routes are so stunning. Making our way from the eastern beaches, we wanted to check out a city called Ella. This was going to be our first train ride in Sri Lanka, and we had heard that this specific train line to Ella was one of the most beautiful in the country. Unfortunately, after arriving at the train station, after being super excited for this train ride, we figured out one of the unspoken rules of the Sri Lankan train system. Having a train ticket doesn't necessarily mean you have a spot on the train. The ticket just gets you on the platform, but you have to fight for your space on the train. So that's Mike and I's train, but it's so full that like there's seriously no space for us to get on, so we missed it. Needless to say, we learned the lesson pretty quickly. Uh, the train left without Mike and I, so that was a fun experience. The following day, we were determined though, and we made it on first thing. Once again, it's an absolute gong show. Are we making it on? Yeah. No doubt. No doubt, no doubt. As we were riding on the crowded train, we met a fellow group of travelers who invited us to join them on a big morning hike up to Adam's Peak. We had never heard of Adam's Peak before, but since the invitation presented itself, we couldn't refuse. It's like the Polar Express, except like in Sri Lanka. I think all of those guys got booted off because they didn't have tickets, so now we all have space. With Sri Lanka being so well connected through public transit, our spontaneous change of plans was effortless. We ended up hopping off the train early and beginning our hike up the 5,500 stairs of Adams Peak the following morning at 1 a.m. We've got the entire gang here. Hi. We're gonna hike. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yes. So we are headed all the way up that trail of lights to the very top. Let's have a good time. We made it to the top just before sunrise and the view was absolutely unreal. Adam's Peak put us high above the clouds, where we were able to stand and watch the sun come over the horizon. There's few words that can describe how beautiful this was. Definitely worth a spontaneous trip. From Adam's Peak, Mike and I said goodbye to our newly made friends and hopped back on the train. As we left the mountains, we passed through the beautiful tea plantations of Ella and the vistas of Uluwatawe, eventually arriving along the southern coast. We are finally at the place that I was most excited for, the place that I'm looking forward to the most, which is the southern coast beaches. I was beginning to realize how unique Sri Lanka is when it comes to its diverse geography. Being able to go from world-class beaches to tropical mountains and elephant safaris was so cool. Sri Lanka is just one of those countries that seems to have it all. Upon arriving along the southern coast of Sri Lanka, we realized that it was definitely much busier than the north and eastern parts of the country. With bars and restaurants lining the beaches and no shortage of hotel rooms to choose from, you won't have to be jumping into the back of a stranger's truck anytime soon. In many ways, it was nice to be around other tourists again, but there was definitely something cool about our isolated couple of weeks up north. So just keep that in mind. I'm personally really happy that Mike and I decided to visit the entire country and find some of those hidden gems rather than just spending our time at the tourist hotspots. With that being said though, the southern coast is very touristy for good reason because it's home to some of the best beaches in the country. Whether you're into surfing, which by the way is a huge thing in Sri Lanka, or you're just looking for some of the country's best beaches to kick back and relax on, you really can't go wrong with any of the small beach towns scattered along the coast. We spent our final week in Sri Lanka, beach hopping our way back to Colombo, just spending a day or two in a bunch of different coastal towns. If you want specific about the beaches and the towns that we visited and what they're all like, you can check out my detailed travel guide which breaks down exactly how we spent our month traveling Sri Lanka. I've also put together a PDF travel guide which can assist you on your trip. It covers every everything that you need to know when planning a trip to Sri Lanka, from travel visas and vaccines to safety and money. If you want to check it out, it's on sale for $10. You'll not only be supporting me, but you'll also have yourself a great trip. You can check it out at noavde.com forward slash store. And there it is guys. Thank you so much for watching. It has honestly been a blast over the past couple days as I've been digging through these hard drives and just reminiscing about the good times that we've had over these previous trips. Honestly, vlogging is such a fun thing. I'm so thankful that I get to go back and look at these memories um, and just have them stored. It's a pretty cool thing. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate every single one of you so much. I'll see you all in another one.